Welcome to part two. If you have not already seen part one, go watch it right now. Otherwise, a lot of this won't make any sense. Now, I wanted to discuss before we get started some of the suggestion you gave me in the comments of the last video, much of which was actually very helpful and constructive, which is great to see in the YouTube comment section. The first suggestion you had was, stop standing on the edge of the pit, you idiot. At least put up a handrail or something, you're gonna fall in. Well, I'm gonna solve your problem by just standing in the pit. I can't fall into a pit I'm already standing in. So there. The second suggestion you all had was, check the main crankshaft bearings. Because the balance shaft bearings were shot, which I showed you in the last video, the material that flaked off of the bearings has to go somewhere, so you should check the main crankshaft bearings to make sure that that material didn't flow around and damage those bearings. And that's a great suggestion. However, by the time that video had come out, the engine was not only back together, but in the car. So I can't really check it now because it's all back together. But it, it was a very helpful suggestion. I'll remember it next time around. And lastly, I just want to remind you that I'm an entertainer, not an instructor. Most of what I'm doing, I'm doing for the first time, and the end result of this project will affect only me. So any rookie mistakes or problems that I encounter will be my problems that I have to rectify, and it's all part of the learning experience. And with that said, on with part two. As I said in the last video, so I'm not gonna drill any holes in an intake manifold. What I'm gonna do instead is make my own base plate, complete with vacuum channels and ports for the PCV valve and brake booster vacuum line. I'll be making the base plate out of two pieces of aluminum just like this, but the first step is to figure out where to route the vacuum lines and to make a template out of paper. The most logical place to mount the fitting for the brake booster vacuum line is over here in the back corner of the carburetor just in front of the distributor. But the vacuum line running from the PCV valve to the valve cover poses significantly more of a challenge because pretty much everything's in the way. I can't put it back here because then this throttle linkage wouldn't clear it. There's not really an option over here because A, there's not much room. The fuel line has to come out here. And the place it routes to is all the way over here on the other side. So that's not exactly an ideal path. Uh, the power just went out. I'm gonna use this to give myself some light. Yes, I realize this is not ideal. I've still got the problem of where on earth to mount this stupid thing. Because this, this hose is directly in the way. I may have to move it, actually. <coughs> There's that. There's that. I may just scrap the hard pipe all together and just have a soft coolant line go all the way across the engine here. Regardless, let's just kind of wiggle this out of the way. Now that I've moved that bit of coolant line out of the way, there is plenty, and I'll have to get a new vacuum hose because this doesn't reach, but there is, seems to be plenty of mounting space up here. All right, I've extracted the old PCV valve from the old base plate, which I'm going to reuse. A little dirty, but it's fine. Let's stick it on there so I can see roughly where it goes, and that gives it a little bit more height, and it'll go somewhere about here, which will be fine. All I have to do is relocate this coolant line that directly interferes with it, as I said. And I can't forget the brake vacuum line, which will go, you can't even see my hand, what's the point? <laughs> which will go back here, and finally, All right, got the middle bit cut out of it. Screw it back in. So I guess I'll just take this out of here and scratch it onto a bit of aluminum. Yeah, that looks fan awful. That looks terrible. Now the power's back. I can continue.
It is very, very tight. But it fits. I didn't quite line it up perfectly. Now it's time for the second piece of aluminum. I made a few mistakes on this, the bottom piece here. This notch, which I thought was necessary, isn't. So it's just there. I could have just cut straight across here, whatever. It doesn't really make any difference. I can just use this on the bottom and it'll seal against the intake manifold. It won't seal against the bottom of the carburetor. So I get rid of this notch on this piece of aluminum when I trace it out. Also I need, I've taken a little <coughs> dirt trace of the bottom of the carburetor here and this needs to be the cutout for the top piece or this bit right here. Let's go for a little test fit here. Base plate first with the unnecessary notch out of it. Yes. Carburetor side plate. Yes, perfect. And the carburetor. Perfect fit first time. No, I'm lying. This is like the fourth time I'm fitting it. I had to remount some holes and do some adjustments, but it fits now, so that's that's uh, that's all that matters. Next, I need to harvest the threaded fittings from the old carburetor base plate. Drill some holes into them. and then tap those holes to mount the old fittings to the new base plate. With the test fit of everything together successfully completed, it's time to drill out the vacuum channels to lead to the new fittings. This is the reason I'm using two pieces of aluminum instead of just one. Since I don't possess any sort of mill, carving out these vacuum channels proved a bit of a challenge, so what you're about to witness is the severe misuse of a drill press with the aid of a Harbor Freight milling vise. No, this didn't work very well. No, it isn't very safe. No, it isn't very advisable. And yes, I did have to send my drill press to therapy. After that nightmare was over, I had to de-chowder it a bit with the spinny grindy bit. And then spread a liberal dose of RTV to seal the two halves together. Wow, I'm an idiot. Oh my god. I just did the dumbest thing ever. Why on earth did I drill a hole through the bottom? Why did I do that? This was a stupid idea. Now 
Now we just need to use some small pieces of tin and some epoxy to fill up these various holes here, here, and the two holes I drilled on the bottom by mistake because I'm an idiot. I guess it could have happened to anyone. Yeah, sure, that's, we'll go with that. Useless holes patched up. Now to do the rest of them. And I'm just gonna smear epoxy on the outside of this just to make sure it seals because I have leftover epoxy. And that's what you do with leftover epoxy. You use it. I was about to call it fabricating right up until the point I started using epoxy. That sort of cheapens it a bit makes me upset. I would do this differently if I had to do it over again, but that's just because uh, this is the first time I've done anything like this, and I would uh, inevitably learn from the first experience of doing anything. This line goes to the brake booster. The vacuum channel feed is in here that you probably can't see. I just milled a groove by abusing a drill press, so there's a channel for vacuum under here, going up to this line and over here. It's the same thing except this goes to, this is the PCV valve and this goes to the intake, uh, not the intake manifold, the valve cover. There's a groove running right straight through here. You might even be able to see it on camera, or the opening for the groove anyway. All right, here's the test fit with the valves in place and I have two interference issues, one of which I already knew about. The PCV valve inter here intersects directly with where the coolant hose to the heater core went. This is no big deal and I planned for it. So I'm just going to rotate this little spigot here around so that it's U-shaped like that and get rid of this hard line here completely and just run a soft coolant hose around the PCV valve, run the vacuum line from the PCV to the valve cover here. The other issue is here back on the back of the carburetor, but I'll get to that problem in a second. First, I want to run the vacuum line from the PCV valve to the valve cover. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, wait. I forgot I didn't attach this yet. <laughs> there we go. Lay on top the world's dirtiest homemade carburetor base gasket, except lay it the other way around so that it fits. Why isn't it? There we go. Insert the world's ugliest homemade carburetor gasket. Insert a beautiful, pristine, factory-made carburetor. And now, secure everything down. On, on this side of the valve cover here, there's a little spigot, and this releases crankcase, va crankcase vapors to be sucked into the air filter. Now, this base plate for this air filter does have a little spigot that came with it, to connect a hose to, to run to this type of setup. However, the hole for it is over here on the complete opposite side of the engine. And undoubtedly, I'm gonna have some interference with some hoses over here. If that is the case, then I will have to drill a new hole on this side and block this one off, which is unfortunate, but I wanna run the, some, the vacuum hoses and this coolant hose and everything before I come to the verdict that I absolutely do need to drill a hole over here. That, that barely fits, for sure, but it does indeed fit. And I think I can actually get that spigot in there, which would be a nice bonus. Yeah, I can get it in there. What an awesome bonus. If you're curious what it looks like with the air filter in place, as I am, here you go. On the back of the carburetor here, I have a little bit of a clearance issue. This is the vacuum port that goes to the power brake booster. And directly above it is the choke cable mount. Directly above it, like a centimeter of clearance. Now my first thought was to modify the choke cable mount, but I'm lazy. So I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna try to do instead is unscrew this fitting from the base here 
and try to hack it off at a bit of an angle, or maybe even a 90 degree angle, so the hose can come straight out the back here. Yeah, let's see how that works. I only have two of these fittings, so I need to be really careful, and I cannot find the thread size for this, so I can't really replace it. There, it's not a 90 degree angle, but it will probably work. Uh, a good thing to note, these are not welding gloves. Don't know if you realize that. Look at this thing, is that not the ugliest fitting? Well, success or not, I think it's time to chop off the neck of this one. I believe AVE calls this fabric cobbling. Commence weldification. Take it out of the vise and give it a little inspection all the way around. I don't think I missed any bit of it. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm done. Obviously that's not 90 degrees, it's more like 45. But it'll still clear the thing. And that's all I really care about, so I'm happy about that. Weld so clean, Ray Charles would approve. Well, it's still not uh, brilliant, but it, is, it looks a lot better than it did. No one will be mistaking it for a factory-made part whatsoever. Let's go ahead and try to test fit this bugger. Let me just get this little bit out of the way, because the neck will now hit it while I'm trying to fit it. Now, in the position it was screwed down, the neck was facing out like that. Perfect. Now the key component, let's see if this choke cable mounting bracket will clear with the hose on. Good, about a centimeter of clearance in between the two. And let's whack the hose on there and see what happens. Look at that, perfect. And I don't have to modify this bracket at all. You know what? If it's ugly and it works, it ain't ugly. No, it's still ugly. But if it works, it works, so that's, that's cool. Just about the last thing I have on the carburetor to cobble together, or indeed this entire project, is the throttle linkage to the carburetor. On the back of the carburetor, there's a little bolt here with slots in it, and this is the old throttle linkage that I had to take off because it fouled on the tr distributor. It's just a simple twisting mechanism. A cable would have been a much easier solution, but anyway, I just need to figure out some way to modify this guy so that this little slip rod that pulls on the twist arm fits onto it and can, I can control the speed of the engine because that's always a nice feature to have. I got my new bent piece of metal in place and look at that, fits just fine. Here's the primary action, and here's the secondary. Oh yeah, I can just, I can just hear the power. Just hear the, the, the sucking of air. You know, that carburetor sound that I have no better way to describe. Anyway, I'm excited about this. Oh man, it's really starting to come together now. This throttle link has just added a whole new element of fun and excitement. Now to route the crankcase vent right here to the air filter. All right, I've jammed an undersized PEX fitting down into the hole there. Hopefully that'll keep the hose rigid, not kinkable. Look at that, works like a charm, sort of. Now let's place the base back. And this, I'm not gonna use hose clamps for this because I feel it unnecessary. And with that hose, the top of this engine is even more of a coolant hose maze. This is rubbing against this base plate, but this is a smooth edge on the metal, so I'm not too worried about it. Same with over here. It's rubbing, but it's, on a, it's rubbing on a smooth edge, so I'm not too concerned. I will keep an eye out on it, though. And let's just pop the air filter on it, and then snap on all the millions of clips just for good measure and fun. There we go. Air filter in place and hooked up to the crankcase ventilation. Now to continue with the final engine assembly.
This right here is the pilot bearing or bushing that came out of the engine I took out of the car. It was so loose that it fell out of the engine from just the force of gravity. So with this information in mind, I ordered a new pilot bearing and the order accidentally got canceled somehow, which is unfortunate, but it doesn't matter because the pilot bearing in this engine appears to be perfectly fine and it's staying in even when I turn it upside down and the force of gravity acts on it. So that's always a good sign. And here is my brand new clutch plate. And you notice it's mounted on a bolt. Well, I have it, uh, you know, spinning on a bolt. That's because the clutch alignment tool I ordered had the wrong spline pattern, so I hacked the end off of it and made my own clutch alignment tool. I got this bit as centered as I possibly could. So, uh, yeah. If you can't buy it, make it. Or buy it whole, hack bits off of it, and make your own from the bits that you've hacked off. There's a lesson in there somewhere. Perfecto. Now that the engine is largely back together, it's time to installate it back into the Saab. This is very exciting. It's also the most annoying part of the entire process because I have to delicately move around a several hundred pound chunk of metal into the car and made it to another slightly smaller massive chunk of metal. This is very annoying. And then afterward, I have to reach my hand underneath the engine like I'm inseminating a cow to install the starter, which is put in a stupid place underneath the engine on a car that has no removable, removable floor. The floor pan underneath the engine is part of the structure of the Saab, so there's no reaching underneath it. I have to just go in from the front, and the nuts are inaccessible. It's all very annoying, but afterward, at some point, I'll hopefully be driving the car. That is, if I didn't screw up anything on the engine too badly, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I do have a spare exhaust for this car, but some idiot at some point welded the entire thing together so I would have to grind it all to pieces and fabricate new welds to uh, replace the exhaust in this car so I'm going to stick with the cherry bomb that's on there instead, oh, instead of the proper sob exhaust three hours later unless I screwed something up horribly the worst part is over huh <sighs> well the engine's in now Time to do up 15 million bolts and hook up various other things. Time to install the starter, a job I hate. Now, can I whack it in there? Ah, perfect. That's all the little help I needed. This is tight as it's going to get. Oh my god, pain. Ah, it's in. What's curious with this new engine is that, well, I say new in air quotes, is that even though it's the exact same engine that I took out of the car, the coolant hose routing seems to be substantially different. And it mainly has to do with how the, I forgot the hose clamp, how the heater core was hooked up. It didn't match any diagrams I, look at, I looked at, so I'm rerouting it based on what looks right. Hopefully it is right. I'll know if my car either overheats or has no heat. Of course, it didn't have heat before, so I guess the, if it had heat now, that'd be an improvement. Never really looked into that because I only use this car in the summer anyway. I always wondered how I was gonna develop back problems. There we go. This is annoying, but it could be a lot worse. There we go. Stop it. Stupid fan. It's all, it's all attached. Brought to you by Saab Octibula. 
Look at that, it has a face again. The engine oil I'm putting in here has a zinc additive, or I should say I added a zinc additive because this is a flat tappet cam engine. Oh, I heard something click. I heard something click. It's probably the clock. Ah, my hazards are on. No, my blinker's on and all my taillights. I guess this is what I was fiddling with while the car was out of commission. Let's see if it starts. I'm so excited. The fuel pump in the back seat makes it a lot, a lot louder. Quite a bit louder. Oh, I can hear it doing things up there. All right. Ugh. So incredibly nervous. Pump the accelerator a bit. Uh, crank. Stop cranking, pump. Let's put the choke on a bit. Oh man, 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 it runs! Briefly. Not very well, I have to admit. Put the choke on fully. Oh, 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 at some point, I gotta remember I'm in a closed building. Let's go open that door now, shall we? a lot of smoke. Mm. I think it's just grease burning off of the exhaust pipe. Uh-oh. Nope, choke in. And that was my first indication of a problem, but I'll save that for the next episode. Coming in part three, I troubleshoot. I tune. I drive.